So I'm going I'm to step back a little bit further. Uh, we got into this in 2009, so not, not going all the way back, but a couple years ago with an economic crisis town hall. We had about 800 folks show up to, to say, you know, learn what's going on structurally and, and what can we do about it um, in, our, in our communities. Out of that, there was a, a ton of energy looking at banks, lots of anger towards the big Wall Street banks. And our question was, how do we take that negative energy, that, that moving away from something we don't want and channel it to something that we do want. So what, what are the types of economies that we want to build? Uh, we quickly landed on uh, what Stacy mentioned in terms of the reality of community banks serving the productive needs in the real economy. And we launched a Move Your Money campaign. This is before the Huffington Post piece that gave us a lot of momentum. Uh, we called it, I believe, Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is. And for us, it was when, when we went out on the streets and said, yeah, move, move your money out of the big banks, people would go, oh, yeah, I'll move from Bank of America into Key Bank. And they thought they were doing something good. And so it was, we, we quickly learned there was a disconnect within people's minds about what, what was a healthy banking I would put a mic option. on Jared just a little better. I'll, I'll scoot up a little bit. This one? Is this the phone one? All right. Let's try that. Let me know if that's, if that's uh, better. Um, so we... Uh, devised a ranking system, getting back to the, the question of metrics, uh, how can we objectively uh, look at banks and um, create some sort of tool that helps people make decisions. So we developed um, a three-part ranking system, one that looks at local area, are the, the banks rooted in the community, say the Bank of Lake Oswego is only in Lake Oswego. You know that they have a vested interest in the health of Lake Oswego, that's one of our, our suburbs. Uh, that's an important feature. Bank of America could pull out any time they want from Lake Oswego if the tides turn. If, that, so that's one question. Ownership is another, um, where ownership is, profits flow. So credit unions circulate that among their members. Privately owned banks that are owned by people in the community tend to circulate more wealth in the community. Uh, obviously, the NASDAQ, you know, internationally traded banks are, are extracting wealth uh, from our communities. The third type, and I, I really appreciate learning from Stacy on this um, the other last, last year, the year before, uh, looking at small business lending. and. That metric helped us really separate um, the banks that were productive in our in our local communities and those that were, you know, serving more the the speculative needs. So we look at the FDIC NCUA data to see what levels of small business loans are being made. When we tally these up in a little matrix, it's uh, it's it's pretty elegant what happens. The the big banks that have been uh, doing some nefarious stuff rise to the or fall to the bottom, and the the community banks that are are rooted um, rise to the top. Um, so the, the Move Your Money campaign was, we had some success, um, I think we could have a lot more, but it, it solved the liquidity, the supply side of the questions. So we move our funds into banks, if we're not moving, say if we, if we move our deposits into community banks and then keep getting our mortgages and our car loans and our credit cards and our business loans through Wells Fargo or Bank of America, we're not helping the, the situation, so we're not really localizing that. So how do we move debt too? So that was an important important piece. And again, back to, to Stacy, keep keep bringing you up. You've you've written some good stuff on on that that linkage. Um, appreciate that. Uh, so when we started asking what the real needs of community banks were, why why aren't they lending? Why aren't the needs being met in the communities? We started to understand the structural issues going on, uh, and and basically landed on the state bank concept. Um, I'm going to stick a little bit more to the Bank of North Dakota model. I like Ellen's ideas about how that model could be used to solve some of the other current issues. But when we were looking at the, the Bank of North Dakota, we saw this as a, a massive move your money campaign. How can we bring our state deposits local? And how can we circulate interest in the local economy? And how can we support the institutions that are lending to local businesses? Um, so in our, um, in our analysis, uh, we, if, if we, the bills that we have in place to, to put a state bank in Oregon, uh, it's not an immediate revenue bill, nor an immediate jobs bill or an immediate economic development. It's, it's more of a long-term structural shift that can give a leg up to the community banks and uh, circulate more money. And, and over time, there's a massive impact that could, could happen, I think, on the, in the, real, in the real economy on the, on the street level. Um, what is uh, a state bank? Um, basically, it levels the playing field for the community banks. It captures that, that revenue. Uh, my, and my role with the Oregonians for State Bank has been to meet with the CEOs uh, and CFOs and um, leaders of the community banks and credit unions around the state and, and just hear what their needs are 
and make sure that we're not in love with a, a solution and trying to make it fit the problem. We're actually hearing what the, what the needs are in the community banks and making sure that the structure, structure fits that. So the things that we agree on are that public dollars should circulate in the local uh, economies, um, that loan participations can help community banks. Let's say if uh, a banking CEO friend who had, was offered a, a $20 million loan. Hey, can you guys make this loan? It's for a renewable energy project, uh, guaranteed by the county, I believe, low risk. Well, it's way too big for me, he says. And for me to participate that, I'd either have to go to Bank of America or find five other community banks or go to an out-of-state banker's bank. It's not going to work. The, for, for me to take on the risk for the, the return, the headache, the liability, it, it, it won't work. Um, so how do we participate that out? A state bank like Bank of North Dakota would fill that gap, that, say, $15 million they were lacking, and that could, that could stay in state. Um, the third thing that we agree on, bankers uh, and, and those of us working on the campaign, is that a safe secondary market would be good for community banks. So what do I mean by that? Um, say uh, a bank, the, the same bank that I, I was talking about, has the ability to grow. They've, they've raised a bunch of deposits in the community. They're looking for loans. And that, that cycle is, tends to be a little bit out of sync. So they have the ability, but not the loan. If they could go to the state bank and buy a loan, that say somebody else has sold or somebody else has participated, they can immediately grow and put that money to use. Um, the fourth issue we agree on is keeping money circulating in the state. We've um, and relate that relates to the secondary market too. We think of all the FHA loans and the VA loans that we immediately sell through Wall Street. Those are guaranteed loans that if a state bank captured those, would circulate interest in the state, provide a slow and steady rate of return, uh, and um, and keep that money local. Um, the fifth area is a consolidation of economic development tools. In Oregon, we have a whole bunch of agencies and programs, and they seem to change daily if you, if you talk to bankers or small business advocates. And it's, it's kind of a nightmare to figure out who is doing what, who has the money, how have things changed, who do I call today. I'm not going to, if I'm a banker, I'm not going to make any money on this, so how do I help my, my client? There's not really a system. So consolidating those tools under a banking structure that works with community banks allows those community banks to take advantage of the tools, the interest rate buy-downs, the loan guarantees, the other credit enhancement tools, or, or the direct lending to, say, first-time farmers or first-time small businesses that, that uh, community banks can't take the risk on. Um, so I guess one, one thing, one phrase I throw out quite a bit with, with bankers, and they seem to get it, is, is that we have an economic leakage happening in our communities. We uh, work really hard, we, the working people, uh, and then we pay all this interest out of our state. And are there tools that we can use to capture that, which becomes revenue for the state bank, that can then support economic development? If we can do that and support a vibrant community banking system, then we have uh, community banks doing more of what they're good at, which means more small business jobs, means more jobs in general, it means a healthier economy that responds to the needs of the people uh, locally. Um, I always get the question of, of where do bankers stand, and we're going to have the Oregon Bankers Association come out pretty strongly against a state bank, and that always baffles people. But it really comes down to two main fears um, that I don't, I don't know how we're going to overcome on a on an institutional level. I should back up, our, our banking association is mixed. It's got community bankers and, and the big banks. Um, and they have traditionally, if you look at all the decisions, lined up with the big banks. Mm -hmm. So we have, a, we have a, you know, a political structure that tends to lend itself that way. Um, the two fears are basically socialism. That word gets thrown out there a lot. Um, and uh, we love the, the flaming Republican uh, socialists out in North Dakota for, for that one. Um, <laughs> right. But the, the deeper fear is the market destabilization. Uh, bankers are concerned that, that a state bank is going to be set up and, and either take over, that's the socialism, or, or say um, do things that aren't healthy, uh, like 800 pound gorilla jumps into the pool and starts swinging around, that can really throw off some markets. So if you think about the regulatory question, mm -hmm. a state, let's say North Dakota doing business as the state bank of North Dakota, or bank of North Dakota, who are they regulated by? They're not FDIC regulated. You would never want the feds coming in and saying, let's remove that board director who happens to be the governor or the treasurer. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> or let's seize state assets. You don't want that either. So it doesn't make sense to, to have that as your regulatory body. And it increases costs for very little return on that, that um, the FDIC insurance. Uh, if you then bring it under your state regulators, and we were meeting with the state regulators of Oregon last week, uh, at just flushing out what's an appropriate role for them to make sure, make sure that these institutions are healthy, 
um, th then they can't remove the board members, or that would be politically bad to remove the governor or treasurer or the, the ag commissioner or labor commissioner. Um, what are the other tools they typically do in a, in a bank regulating system? They can um, say cease and desist. Well, maybe that would that have a place. I'm not sure it really would. Or seize state assets. Again, we're back to the same thing. So how do you work with mm -hmm. with some constraints to make sure this thing doesn't run off the rails? For example, if, if it did fail um, and it was wrapped up in loan participations with all the, the community banks around the state, you could potentially take them down too because you'd have non-performing assets that would disproportionately affect community banks. So there is a serious question on, on how do you regulate this. We keep saying, look at Bank of North Dakota, and they keep saying that's North Dakota. As you mentioned, John, Oregon's a little different politically than North Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, and then the last, last fear is, I think, you know, captures all of these. It's the short-sighted political nature. If this is a long-term structural play to shift our economy, how do we get the short-sighted political, you know, mongering out of the out of the system. So these, these are the questions that we're wrestling with um, on a legislative level. Uh, we've got quite a bit of bipartisan support. Our Republicans understand that this is a, this is a win for our local economies. Our Democrats are, are um, seeing that too. Our treasurer's in the, the discussion. Um, so we're, we're, we're moving ahead. Um, I, think I'll, I think I'll cut it there.